Hello, everyone. Welcome to Access Miracles. I'm Marie. And I'm Dan. Yes. <laughs> Goodness, the nerves today. And our guest is Jason Warwick, one of our elders in the community, probably one of the quote unquote oldest elders in the community. <laughs> <laughs> By that, I mean, really, he's been in the community a long time. <laughs> Not that he needs any credibility, but I just wanted to put it in context for everyone. The show today, actually, our shows are always anchored um, on a specific miracle principle. And today's show is anchored on the third miracle principle. I think it's so fitting because it's a way to introduce Jason Warwick, who he is for me in this journey of awakening. The third miracle principle says, God, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires them. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. Uh, Jason, for me, a recent miracle for me with Jason was that, well, let me start over. I was talking to a gentleman who came for one of our gatherings. His name is Howard. He's actually from New York. And we just happened to have a random joining as he was leaving La Casa de Milagros. And I found myself saying to him that one of the biggest things that's happening for me is this idea of hierarchy about there's a better place or there's better groups of people that are more advanced, more awakened, more enlightened, more mind trained. I myself came from a path that was the Hindu path, which says that, you know, you practice celibacy and you do a thousand mantras and, and then you'll awaken. Living miracles for me, I feel is the most gentle reflection because in this path in this community we don't do anything that anybody out there in the world does we do computer work we clean toilets we cook some of us are straight some of us are not some of us are bisexual some of us are married some of us are in a relationship and some of us are single some of us are smokers some of us are not. I think what's really beautiful about that is that it allows everybody to see that there isn't any exception for where you are because how we are in here is exactly how you are. You know, I, I did 20 years of training in the rituals of the Hindu faith and the light ceremony and all of these rituals that I felt was valuable in terms of my awakening. But in this community, there's no such thing as ritual. The only thing we really have here is just looking at our mind and seeing where we have some kind of judgment. And then we just get to practice forgiveness in our mind and say that what I see isn't what I see. If I don't feel love when I'm looking at what I'm looking at, it's just something that I need to take back in my mind and forgive some kind of feeling that I feel isn't me, but really is. So having said all that, when N says in this miracle principle, in this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. I recall last year for um, this fundraiser, Foundation for Inner Peace, and Jason was there too for that. And there was a lot of preparation that we had to do at the monastery because there were a lot of people that were going to come. And one of the people I was volunteering with, her name is Frances, we were down on the campground and there was a lot of physical labor that we were doing, but you know, it was still a lot of joy. At some point she was expressing something about, because she, she was 
raised in the Mormon faith and she was getting activated about all these things that were coming up in terms of hierarchy and And really, it was very painful in her heart because what she was seeing with the elders, she felt like this was bringing up for her. I didn't say anything to her because I, the only thing I could feel was I felt sad because I love Francis so much. And the fact that she felt this way about the elders, actually, because I knew that's, well, that's not what it was, but I didn't know what to say. And my heart actually was like really aching that she felt that way because I wanted her to experience the elders the way I experienced the elders. But I didn't say anything. And then a couple of days later, we were having lunch and um, Jason stopped by. And uh, he was updating everyone about what was going on. And Frances is always in the kitchen, you know. She loves that devotional service. And then at some point, um, it was asked, you know, who's going to, who feels to wash and support Francis with the dishes. And immediately Jason raised up his hand and said, I feel that. Here was an elder, a male elder, who was in the kitchen washing dishes, wiping tables. And I completely lost it. I started crying. I actually sobbed on Jason's chest because I said he didn't even know. But that moment was such a gift for me because I got to see that the prayer of my heart was that I could see friends to see that there's no such thing as a hierarchy. And for me, because Jason comes from that place of love all the time, he's like a walking miracle for me. Now remember a parable that Suzanne Sullivan shared when she first landed in community. And she was going through so much stuff as her self-concept was being undone. And Jason, because he felt the guidance, climbed up in the bunk bed with her. Like I could see how for myself, if there was that kind of a guidance, how I would judge it because I would think, oh, this could be seen as sexual or manipulation or something. But I feel like Jason is being done through so strongly and so clearly that he has none of those concerns anymore. And he just allows spirit to work through him without necessarily even, I imagine, knowing why for, or what for. But his personal concern for how he's going to be viewed is not there anymore. And so he's done through in terms of how he does the movies for us. And the things that he says, but more than anything else, I mean, I don't, there isn't anything that he does that doesn't come across from love, so it's always a miracle, my experience of him. Washing dishes, climbing in a bunk bed. And I feel that in sharing that with all of you, you know, you get to experience that for yourself, and this is just a reflection of your mind, our mind. It's a form called Jason Warwick. Thank you, Jason. A couple of days ago, <clears throat> um, I had I was thinking about what we would be doing, uh, what we would be asking Jason, and. Um, <clears throat> I had a, an issue that kept coming up. When I left um, uh, my home, my previous home in Sedona, about nine months ago, uh, it was the end of a long relationship with my ex-wife and uh, 
my friends and so forth. And I thought, well, okay, this is, this, the call was so strong. I just knew it was time. It was just, uh, there was no, no question. And so when I started living here um, in Mexico, uh, there's a washing that occurs. There's a, an undoing. And part of that undoing for me was in my relationship with my ex-wife, and which had a, a lot of history. And, and um, so after, after the first several months, which um, was filled with um, some, I mean, a, a lot of joy and also some angst, uh, it started... The, you know, this, this, this feeling of homesickness and all these things that, that occurred started to go away. But every so often, even nine months later, there was a, a feeling of all of a sudden I, I would look at something and it was, would remind me of her. And I would get this nostalgic feeling and, um, and I would cry. And so I mentioned this to Jason and I said, what is that? You know, why isn't this moving away. I mean, it, it, it was a lot, lot less. But what, what was that? And um, he had an answer for me, which, which I'm going to turn over to him to uh, repeat. Because <laughs> it's, it's about time he gets in on this. <laughs> and, um, but that was one thing. Um, and then I have another question for him afterwards. So, Jason, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Go ahead and enlighten our audience, as well as myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I forgot what I said. <laughs> but I have something else, because you reminded me of the question right before the show. So while I was, was going to the washroom, I just said, anything you want to remind me of spirit. And what came to my mind was, uh, you know, you go to the doctor and, like, reflexes. They tap you in one place and, and it seems to have this tremendous control over one area of the body or pressure points in uh, Ayurvedic medicine. You can do one thing. And, and I, I remember we were just watching that movie, uh, Wrinkle in Time, and one of the key, the key moments in the movie was where they said, embrace your faults. I think that's the wording they used. And really, the way I interpret that was, everything where you feel a sense of sadness or something you don't like about yourself or something where you don't feel supremely happy, it's just an inroads in, into the love that you are. And the movie showed that by the end, the ego just disappeared and you know, the love revealed itself underneath. So when you feel that kind of intensity around Kathy or a deep emotion, I actually went to a presentation with Marianne Williamson a few years ago First time I'd ever seen her on this big stage and there's just something about her when she was speaking it just it affected me and I didn't really know why I mean she's obviously very passionate and articulate and I knew that yeah there was just opportunities to look at deeper aspects of the course so when I went home I just prayed what is it you want me to see spirit and I had this overwhelming emotion for yeah it just seemed like it went on for hours and there was so much gratitude for her but but what was underneath it was so much pain. I felt, I resonated, quote, you can use that term, with so much pain because her speech was a lot about like she was launching her political, um, I guess, agenda or candidacy. And it was, I mean, obviously with the course, if you try to change anything in the world, seek not to change the world, change your mind about the world. But somehow experientially, I felt all this pain and most of my life had been trying to save Albania, save the the poor, save the world, save myself, you know, all the self-help things, constantly trying to improve. It wasn't until I met David in the course that I, I saw, wow, there's going to be a lot of undoing that has to happen. And, and with that, I just saw that anytime you try to fix or change anything in the form, you're actually covering over an intense amount of pain. And so to give ourselves permission not to try to fix anything and for you, in this case, when that emotion just comes up, just letting it, letting it arise. Don't think that you did anything wrong. Because one thing you said to me is, if I could just maybe have a few more minutes with her or go back and 
and be with her, you know, maybe that would make it better, but you were married 48 years. And I said, I think you gave it a good shot. <laughs> I think it's time to go for something deeper. So I think that was the essence. Of it. it was. <laughs> nice job. Um, and actually, uh, there is in that, um, there was a big release for me. Um, over the next couple of days, it's only been a couple of days since then, uh, I have experienced what I would call a miracle because um, that even, even if I allow my mind to go back to certain, what I would call like trigger points, that would be an emotional upset. Uh, I'm not feeling that anymore. And it's like, it was the, in that sharing, which is actually been the miraculous process um, that we've all been going through over at La Casa. Because when these things come up uh, and we're allowing that, and in fact, we're, we're then sharing it with whoever our link is, um, there is a, it's just the most amazing thing to me. There is a release and an undoing that is so powerful. So, yeah, I just, you know, that was a miracle. And I'm, and I'm glad I could share that. <laughs> Boy, but this must be an emotional time because we're both <laughs> falling apart up here. <laughs> yeah, we're like losing. So I do have a question. Yeah. So Jason, I know you're very much into the whole the movie. You do all our movie watchers guide, and you're on um, Susan's show, the Leap, which is all about the quantum experience. So I'm curious, what happens in your mind, or how do you see it when, if it's all quantum, and what we observe like isn't really what's there except what's showing up there is what's in our mind so if there's a moment that you can see that somebody is going through some kind of darkness or hate projection or something like that either towards you or towards something you know as the observer of seeing something like that do you even see that what do you see when that thing is unfolding in front of you like how is that interpreted in your mind does that question make sense yeah well actually it's Francis and I were just talking about this as part of our documentary and in a sense that, yeah, we really wanted to demystify what was going on with awakening, what was going on with this community and, and the documentary for those of you that, well, I think everyone's going to get to see it. It really shows that when you're grounded in the truth and you're grounded in the spirit and a sense of, of who you are and you see that everything people bring to you is for you, it doesn't really affect you except to bring up gratitude. Wow, thank you for feeling safe enough mm. to let that up and, uh, and you know, help the mind wake up to who it really is. So. No judgment, of course. Yeah, just gratitude, I like that, thank you. I mean, I know what, like I was telling someone the other day, the things I've said and exposed and been with with my mighty companions and David and the other elders, it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the space that they held for me, you only want to give that away. So it's like, okay, well, they gave me 10 years. Maybe I got to give, sometimes I hope maybe a little less, but because <laughs> 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 people keep sharing everything over. There's a deep gratitude, but I do wonder. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, that was a mixed message. <laughs> you know, you do want to give the gratitude over and over because that's what you've been given but there's another thought in there somewhere we build it no i think i feel that that's really been the experience for us because you did that quote unquote ahead of us that in even <laughs> having this thing called ellen virtual tv is that we get to share that and say you know wherever you are whatever's rising yeah it's beautiful because yeah. underneath that is the miracle is the love mm -hmm. like it's really really quantum like that so, yeah, thank I think you. maybe the part I could add, because I just remember, I, in the past few weeks, I was getting all of these emails and texts from people and different ones that live with me in the house that they were scared of me. And it was just the strangest, 
the strangest thing. And I was like, what is that? Because, you know, this probably goes into your next question, actually. Maybe I'll let you ask your question first. You know? <laughs> Hopefully you're right. Um, <clears throat> my next question really had to do with uh, something I think everyone uh, has to figure out at some point. And, and that is when occurrences seem to happen that inform, that seem to be a message. Do you have any difficulty in discerning? Are they coming from Holy Spirit or are they coming from ego? And the reason I ask that is that I remember that at one point I asked if you could come to visit me in Sedona after I had met David, and it was about a year later, because I had some questions about how, how am I going to do this? And so you, you got it immediately onto your computer, and you found a ticket, and so I, I said, yeah, well, I'll pay for that, and, and then a car, yeah, I'll pay for that, come on up, and, and the whole ride on this was involved with the kid kicking your chair on the back of the the airplane. The airplane, and, and it was like very uncomfortable. And then you get there, and they had given away the car. And, and you called David, and you said, are we supposed to do this? Is this okay? And David said, yeah, everything is fine. And I thought, wow, that wouldn't have been my first conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I was kind of curious to, to see if with all of this experience that you have now and, and, and your connection with your clarity um, and spirit, do you, are those questions still relevant? Is, is that still something you need to join with um, the other elders and so forth? Yeah, well, we just watched a movie last night that we called Seek Not to Change the World. And the quote that struck me the most, and, and David even looked at me when, when he read it, was um, when you usurp the that the place or the throne of God, you have no choice but to perceive an enemy outside of yourself, and then you put on a shield to protect yourself against the, the fury that you, you feel is going to come unabated, something like that. It's not a direct quote, but... And, and I feel like a kid kicking you know, me in the back of the chair, or one time when I was in Europe, I just gave away, you know, sometimes I'll pick an exit row or try to get a longer seat and in Europe I said no screw it whatever comes to me you know and then there's really tiny airlines and the knees have to be like this and it's like you know and then babies were screaming all around and I was like really really I give you control and this is <laughs> this is what you give me you know but he's like you have no choice but now to go in so I took the direction and just and went in and and 45 minutes just disappeared on the plane ride and there was no awareness of the knees or the body and mm -hmm. And really to give up control, I feel, to that level where you don't know what it's going to take to bring you inside is, yeah, it's a sense of humbleness. And I don't think I'll ever say I'm not going to join with anybody because as long as I perceive mighty companions or, or even people, then it's a call to join more deeply and see that everyone is myself and can help me on the journey. So that's one of the things I've never really... I've never really got this resistance to completely joining with your brother because for me, that's been the whole way out. If the Holy Spirit is everything and, and everywhere, and it's all one mind, then the idea of, of a personal Holy Spirit, me, Jason, listening to this spirit right here in air somewhere, but not there, it doesn't make sense to me. It's all mine. So the Holy Spirit can use everything all the time. So it, you would do well to pay attention to, to everything. Good answer. <laughs> um, when I sat down here, um, Maria already said earlier this morning <clears throat> that she was feeling really emotional about this expression that she was going to uh, start this off with about you. And uh, I sat down here and I, and I thought, I looked around at everybody and it's like, Holy smokes, this is, it is emotional, and it's a great opportunity. I mean, this entire venture 
for us to be able to extend like this is just I think massive. Now I'm sitting here and you're sharing that, Dan. I think it's really beautiful because this whole idea of like a lot, of what's in our mind right now, a lot of it is really this unworthiness. So am I really worthy of seeing this much love, this much unconditional love around me that says however you are is perfect. Whatever you're going through is perfect because we know what's underneath that. Because it's not about the body, it's not about what, what you've gone through per se, it's just that who you are is beyond that. Beyond your marriage or any other career or all the hateful thoughts and fear thoughts that I've gone through, because look at my reflections. It's just, it's like, it's like the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's like, oh my God, it's the Grand Canyon of love. I mean, across from me is Savava and David and Emily and Susan and Jenny and Greg and Kristen and Mara and Peter and Jeffrey and Susanna and Soren and holy shit, and all of you. I mean, if that doesn't obliterate you, I don't know what will. So thank you. Thank you everyone really for this kind of love, this experience. There's something in the, <clears throat> in the text of the course that um, chapter 28 and the section four, it's called the greater joining. And uh, I was introduced to that uh, again at the uh, mystery school, which was uh, an amazing experience. Uh, a real life changer. And so if, if any of you are curious, you might look that up because it, it was the most beautiful explanation of the choice to follow is the one that frees you. And everyone you love to follow the path back home back home <sighs> and it is powerful so <clears throat> I just want to thank Jason <laughs> God. and uh, everyone here yes. for this opportunity and um, you, you got a couple minutes Jason you want to say anything <laughs> Well, thank you. I mean, yeah, my hosts are very emotional. So. <laughs> yeah. So thank everyone out there for for joining with us because um, we feel that this is this is all of us, and um, <clears throat> we're all extensions of one another, and we're all the one mind. And this is the greatest experience in the world. The greatest love story there ever was or is. Yeah. This is it. This is divine providence. It's I our love time. you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Andrew. <laughs>